of brethren from the city of Marietta who are watching us, Greensboro, and Morrow Beach, Georgia, North Carolina, and South Carolina, who are going to be with us watching in the same fellowship. I'd like to apologize for our delay. There was a technical problem. But we're going to begin right now. Amen. I invite the church, those that can, to kneel down so that we can begin the service saying a prayer to the Lord and asking Him to speak to our hearts. Lord, our Father, we plead for the power that is in the blood of Jesus. We place, Lord, in your altar our lives, pleading for forgiveness to our sins. Everything, Lord, that we may have done today, our transgression, our failure, Lord. We ask that through the power of the blood of Jesus, we may be able to reach a complete fellowship that we may be paying attention to your voice, that we may be sensitive, Lord, to the touch of the Holy Spirit. Use, Lord, your servants, your church, and so that this service, through this service, we may touch, speak to our hearts, alerting our lives so that we may be closer to you. Lord, use your servants with grace, with authority, in the revelation of the Lord, and that your word may be able to reach the hearts. It's the prayer that we say this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. Let us begin with a song. Peace of the Lord. That's very weak. Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We are very happy because we are in the house of the Lord. Amen. And we want to uh, wish you a good uh, welcome. And we are here to fulfill an uh, instruction of the Lord. And for sure, the Lord has great blessing for each one of us this morning. And to begin, we're going to sing the song, Forgive Me, O Lord. Everyone making the gestures.
Lord, we want to praise your name because we are once again in your presence. For the blessing you have been able to reach through the blood of Jesus. For the fellowship that we can have with the Holy Spirit. For this moment in your presence. For the people that enter this place are going to be blessed by you, Lord. We praise you for everything in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to sing this song with uh, great joy, great joy, not only the children, but the adults as well, because it's a great joy to be in the presence of the Lord. It's a great joy to grow with the Lord, making all the gestures. Can we repeat, repeat this song? Let us repeat it with even greater joy. The Lord Jesus is at the doors, right? We need to be in the presence of the Lord every day. Amen. The, the other mic is on? I don't know. Look, I'm translating. My brother, a question. Does anybody need translation to the English? Does anybody need a translation to English? You have a, a, a equipment. The tra translation being made by the equipment is enough, right? Does anybody need a translation? Does anyone need? Tra Very good. Amen. At this moment, we're going to have a word of glorification by one of the adolescents. I glorify you, Lord, for your, your blessing to our lives. We glorify for your blessing to our lives because we are in your presence, Lord. Lord, uh, let us uh, learn more from your word, Lord. Bless us in our daily lives in, in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to sing a song that says, Jesus said that heaven is for me. How, see how wonderful the Lord has prepared an eternity for his people. Thank you. 
Glory to God. Who wants to live in heaven? Oh, the adults don't want? Who wants to live in he heaven? Amen. Yes, all of us want to be with the Lord in heaven, in eternity. And now we are going to sing a song to the Lord. Jesus has promised us. Jesus has promised that he's going to take us to him. And this time is near. Jesus is going to come to take his bride. Let's sing this song. Great joy. Glory to Jesus. Well, the, the praises have stopped, have finished, but the celebration continues. Now comes our food, right? The Lord has already prepared our heart with the praises so that we may receive what wants to speak to us during this day. So I agree, I greet the church and all those who visit us with the peace of the Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Our meeting today, our seminar this year, the theme of the seminar is, is surely I'm coming quickly. Let us repeat. Surely I'm coming quickly. Who said those words? Who knows? G Jesus. Jesus is the one who spoke those words. And he wanted to say that surely, surely he is coming. Why is, why is Jesus coming? What is he going to, is he going to do when he comes? He comes to take the church comes to take us. Amen. Very good that everyone knows that. And today, go to the next. Today, we're going to understand the time in which we are living today, which is called the time called soon. The time means that we, it is close to the arrival of Jesus is very close, very close to the time when, when Jesus comes. That's what is called uh, soon. So what is soon? It's very close, very close to the time when Jesus comes. I'm not sure if everybody learned what is the time called soon is to be near, to near of the time when Jesus comes. Everybody understood, right? It's very close. So that's why he has a message very special for us today. And I invite the church to stand up so we can read the word of the Lord in reverence because the Lord is our God. Let us hear the word of the Lord and pay a lot of attention even the children. Amen? Let us listen to it. You can put the next slide, please. Let us read it all together. Then he said to me, These words are faithful and true, and the Lord God of the holy prophets 
sent his angel to show his servants the things which must shortly take place. Amen. So let us close our eyes. Lord, bless the children. Give them the means to learn this word and so that they can pay attention and nothing may uh, distract them from the teaching of this day. We pray, therefore, in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. Those were the words which are in the book that we're going to speak about, uh, learn about today, which is very beautiful. The whole Bible is very beautiful, but there is this book that we're going to learn a lot about today. And I want everyone to pay a lot of attention. Right, Rachel? They're going to pay a lot of attention because the message is very important. So after Jesus was crucified on the cross for us, he resurrected, right? So this means that Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Glory to God. And he is present here in our plate, in our midst. Amen. So you see there, the little hearts there, they are filled with Jesus. They were the disciples. They were filled. The red hearts, they mean that they were filled. They were filled with Jesus. So the disciples saw Jesus doing so many beautiful things. They saw Jesus curing. They saw Jesus doing miracles. When Jesus fed a great crowd, when Jesus opened up the sea so that his people could pass. I'm sorry, that was on the Old Testament, right? And Jesus multiplied the bread when they cured the sick. So Jesus did so many things when he was here on earth. And the disciples saw everything. So when Jesus died, resurrected, and went to heaven, the disciples began to preach the good news to tell everything that they had learned from Jesus, right? They were speaking to the people that Jesus had resurrected and that he had promised that he was going to come back. But many people didn't like this. You see, many converted. See, their hearts were empty, and then when they, from hearing the disciples, go back with their slides so that they can see. See, the empty hearts, after Jesus spoke the message, they were filled, right? Because this is a miracle of sal salvation. They learned what it is Jesus, what Jesus came to do here. They accepted Jesus as their saviors and their lives were, were transformed. But there were those that didn't want to hear those things. They didn't believe. And they picked up one of the disciples of Jesus. You know what they did to, to him? Imprisoned him in an island. Look at there. You, everybody knows what an island is? An island is separated, right? As, isn't it true? Caleb, is, the island is separated. Has a difficult access. And they thought that placing John in that island, this island had a, a name, it was called it. Patterns. So then they thought if we place John there, he's going to stop talking about Jesus to people and his faith was going to grow weaker and he'll give up. So then they placed John there and put him separated in that island. And we learned two beautiful things when with this event. The first, John didn't give up. John stayed in that island but he continued loving the Lord. Do you know what that means? Nobody can separate us from the Lord. No one. Nothing. Nothing can take us away from the Lord, place us afar. It doesn't matter the difficulties through promise, but nobody can separate us from the love of Christ. Instead of only us, we may desire not to want this love, but John stayed there, continued loving the Lord. You know what happened? The Lord revealed to him in a way, very special way. 
the Lord raptured John in spirit and took him to heaven so that he could see what we are going to see one day, what we are anxious to see, what is there in eternity. John went to in spirit to see those things. And he spoke to him and said, you're going to see and you're going to write down all of it so that my people may know so that John had a revelation of the re and the Spirit revealed to him a book, which is the last book of the Bible, which is called Revelations. Let's pick this word, Revelations. Look, they thought that John, when they placed John at that island, he was going to give up, and they thought that he was, was not going to speak about Jesus to anyone else. And you see, Revelations in the Bible, how many thousands and thousands of people read the Bible and know what John went through because he wrote down and left it for us. You know why? Because God has a project for man, a project of salvation, and no one can stop this project. Nobody can prevent this process from going through, which is the project of God. And the project of God, of God will be fulfilled. And the Bible says that the time called soon, uh, what is that time called near? It's near, it's near the, the time when Jesus comes back. Amen? How wonderful. So then John, he wrote there a book, the book of Revelations. Revelations means revelation. Revelation is is when we are revealed something something is revealed to us when a secret is, is told to us something that nobody knows how wonderful we know the secret that lot, lots of people don't know but God reveals only to those who love him amen let's go to the next slide and in this book Jesus asked John the following. John, I want you to write because there are going to be a few signs, a few things are going to take place that you will know, that will allow you to know that it's very near, very near the time when Jesus comes. What signs are those? You can see here three trumpets, right? The first trumpet was happening on the first image on the left. What is that? Nobody knows? Clarinha. You can say. Fire, right? Gabriel, fire. Gabriel, Gabriela and Clarinha said, and the Lord said, <coughs> the Lord said, what? Fire. He burned the trees. And the Lord said, when a large part of the forge, a third part of the forge are burnt, have they been burnt? Yes, many plants have been consumed by the fire. Now the second sign, look at that. You can say, Talita, fish, right? Lots of animals that live in the sea were going to die. They were going to die. A third part of the animals in the sea, they were going to die. Has it happened? Yes. Yes, it happened. And the third, you can say it. The water is 30. Can we go to the river there and drink of that water? No. No, the water has to be treated. It has to be cleaned so we can drink it. In the past, we can, could go to the rivers and, and get the water from there and drink. Uh, was grew, grown up like this. Today, can you do that? No. The things that are going to take place when it happens, and the, and the time is very near, very near the time when Jesus comes. But Jesus doesn't want anybody sleeping at this time and speak out loud. It's very near, very near the time when Jesus comes. It's, so then Jesus spoke about how men's heart are, are going to be when 
the time of his arrival uh, comes. The disciples asked him, how are we going to know how the people are going to be uh, in order for, to receive you? So then Jesus told them a parable. A parable is a story. It's a story that makes it easy for you to understand. in order for people to understand. So then Jesus told them the parable, the parable of the lamp. Does anybody know what a lamp is? I'm gonna show you so that you can see what a lamp is. But you don't do this at home, only with your daddy and your mama. Amen? Have everybody understood? So that was a lamp in the past. There was no electricity. There was no electricity. So it was, everything was dark. At night, everything was very dark. There was no light. But then the Lord, the man made this as a lamp. So then they would turn this light on to light up their faces. I'm going to show you how it was. The wick is very small. <laughs> so they they walk with the lamp like this. It's, it's not lighting up my face very much because there is still light here. But that's how the people did in order to recognize one another, to walk in the night. During the night, everything was dark. So, oh. So can you see it? Japan, nobody, uh, people that don't know us. So that's how people walk during the night with a lamp. If you turn off the lamp, are we going to see me? No. So the lamp was very important. You can turn the lights on again. So the Lord Jesus told the parable. The Lord told the parable of, of the ten virgins were ten women. Pay attention. Ten women. Five were prudent. And five were unwise. So why were they called uh, wise and foolish? Can you, you can, can you answer? Who knows? Because the wise, because they took the lamp and they had oil with them extra oil because if the light if they ran out of oil they would have more oil right if the oil if they ran out of, of oil before the light went off they put more oil you know to keep the their lamp on so need needed a reserve of oil those were the prudent ones they were the wise ones but how about the foolish ones? The foolish ones, they didn't uh, take more oil as a reserve. The word says, you can go to the next slide. They went to a great meeting, a I'm, I'm wedding. Go to the next. The prudent, the wise ones, they, they took oil as a reserve with them. and. The unwise didn't have extra, extra oil. They had the lamp like the others, right? But they were unwise, they were foolish because they didn't have the extra oil as a reserve. Very well, so they were going to a meeting with the groom. It was very late, it was a night. Can you see the clock? And they were waiting they kept waiting and waiting. Go to the next slide. And then they fell asleep. When it came midnight, when it was midnight, this clock uh, is not going to go to midnight. When it was midnight, there it was a voice was heard saying, let us say it all together. Here comes the groom. Here comes the groom. See? So the groom arrived. 
And you know what happened? Everybody awoke, and they got up, and, and they picked up that lamp, right? And you know what happened? The wise ones had actual oil because they had been waiting for a long time, right? And they lit up their faces. So now let's go to the next slide. The wise ones, they came with the uh, lit up lamp. The door opened up and they entered to the wedding. But before that, before this, the, un the foolish ones didn't have oil. So their lamps was lit up or, or off. But they asked the others, oh, I don't, we don't have oil on our lamps. Give us more. So then they said, no, no, go out and buy it. Because if we give you, we're going to be out of it as well. So then as they were to the, the store to buy more oil, so the door opened up. So the previous slide, go to the previous slide, the previous one. Go back. Go back. So, so they came. The door opened up. Then they entered. You see the door? And as they entered, you know what happened? The, clo the door closed. And they were not able to see, to enter anymore. Who is our door? It's Jesus. So then go to the next slide. So the unwise came and they ca found the door closed and they knocked at the door but they were not able to find oil. You know why? Because this door was already closed. There was nobody there to sell them oil. Right, Talita? There was no one in the store to sell them. And how did they come back? With oil or without oil? Without oil. They pay attention. There was no more oil. And they knocked at the door. And Jesus told, her, told them, I don't know you, I cannot see your face. Because the lamp is off. How sad, right? So they were not able to enter. Let's go to the next slide. I'm going to sing that song that speaks about the lamp, right? Let us sing. Very pretty. Glory to God. Amen. So, what did Jesus want to teach us with this story of the lamp? Let us light up the lamp. The te teacher is going to... How it is to have a uh, reserve. If you want to do it at home, you can do it with the, the dad can do with them, your mom. Can ask the, the mother to put the children here. Can you see the face of the, uh, my face with the lamp? Who is here? We're going to put it here. Here's Deborah.
Let us take a picture here. So that's the objective of the lamp, is to illuminate our face, right? So that other people may be able to recognize us. Amen. So this is the lamp. So that people may be able to recognize one another. Oh, he wants it, so let's do it with him. He is our guest. Now don't don't pick it up. Look at his face. Can anybody see his face? How is your name? What is your name? Antonio. It's Antonio. He's here, right? So if we put the lamp on, look at Antonio's sister. She's also our guest. Everybody can see. Amen? So the teacher is going to turn it off. No, now nobody can see it, right? There was a teaching that was very beautiful of the Lord for us. And this teaching is that we are living the time called soon. What is the time called soon? Very close, very close for Jesus to come back. It doesn't sound like he's very close. You're very slow. The time called soon is very close, very close for Jesus to come back. You cannot forget this evermore, ever again, because we may leave this church and Jesus may come back. And today we have our lamp filled and lit up. Amen. Let's go to the next slide. You know what the lamp means? It represents our hearts. And you know what the oil represents? It represents the Holy Spirit. And we need to have our lamp filled with our, in other words, with our hearts filled with the Holy Spirit. How do we fill our hearts with the Holy Spirit? Praising the name of the Lord. When we praise the name of the Lord, we are filling up our lamp. You can answer. Praying. What else? Reading the Bible. What else can we do in order to fill up our lamps? Coming to the church. We're filling up our lamp. We're filling up our lamp when you come to the church. Gabriela answered here. Glorify. Gabriela knows. That glor when you glorify, you fill up our lamps. Now, Rachel, you can say it. Can you say it? Oh, fasting. Glory to God, Talitha. So everything that we do to please our God, you know what happens? It fills up our lamp. When we pray, when we come to the house of the Lord, our lamp is filled up. Because the Holy Spirit is the one who teaches how to live in order to please the Lord. You know, the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is the one who teaches us what is a sin, what is right and what is wrong. And He's the one who guides us in order for us to get to the end of this race. Has everybody understood what the Holy Spirit is? Amen? Amen. So now, go to the next slide. So there were two types of brides, right? A few were uh, wise and the others were foolish so the wise are the ones that want to do everything to pray please the Lord they say Lord here I am Lord I want to please you now let's go to the next slide I want to serve you Lord you see there what are the children doing there what are they do doing they are playing instruments they're praising the Lord in the church exactly what you're doing uh, are we praising the Lord? Are we here in this meeting? We're doing the will of the Father, the Lord, right? So let's go to the next slide. But there are those that are foolish, what the, the people that don't want to serve the Lord, the ones that prefer to stay home, playing video games instead of coming to the church. Those are the ones who prefer to 
be playing instead of reading the Bible, praying or coming to the church, right? Those are the ones that are have been doing uh, the bad choice. Men today, especially our children, they may be in the church, but they are not paying attention. They are not participating in the classes. It's not enough to be inside of the church. You need to have your heart open to receive the oil of the Holy Spirit so that we may leave this place filled and not empty in the same way we entered. We need to open our hearts. The imprudent, they also had the lamp, right? They, the foolish ones, they had the lamp, right? What was lacking for them? The oil. All of us, we have a lamp. Each one of us ha have a heart. But our hearts need to be filled with the oil of the Holy Spirit. Feel the love for the Lord. For what He has done for us. It cannot, should not be empty. So there are many out there. You see there? How is that day there? Is it morning or night? A night. In what time the groom arrived at midnight? Midnight is at night, right? Everything it was dark. And you know what darkness means? Who is the light of the world? Jesus. Who is the light of the world? Jesus, right? So the darkness represents the world without this light. It is the world without Jesus. And the world without Jesus has no joy. Has, doesn't have love. It's a world has a lot of violence, has a lot of sadness, a lot of bad things. That's the midnight. That's what we are living through today. Is the time called soon. Is the midnight. Can we, do we see TV? What goes through on TV? A lot of bad things, right? A lot of violence, wars, people killing one another. People don't have uh, patience with one another anymore. Not even the children respect their parents anymore. But there's a people that has their lamps filled. And these people, they rejoice. They're always happy. They have love for one another. This is a people that has received from the Lord the person of the Holy Spirit of God. That's why this people is a people that has light. It's not like this. Now you can go to the next slide. So the question the Lord is asking to us tonight, how is your lamp today? Are you ready for Jesus to come back? We need to think about this. How is our lamp today? Now go to the next slide. We need to be vigilant because that's what we read in the beginning. Jesus said, surely I'm coming quickly. And the Holy Spirit of God has placed in our hearts this desire that Jesus comes back to take us f w for him. Come, Lord Jesus. That's what the church is saying at the last time, the last hour. This is the desire of the church. Come, Lord Jesus. Take us with you. What the word Maranatha means? Maranatha means, come Lord Jesus. Come Lord Jesus. Let us say Maranatha. Come Lord Jesus. Because we desire to live with him in eternity. That's why we say, come Lord Jesus. Let's say, come, Lord Jesus. So let's sing this song. Very pretty. Very loud, because the song speaks of the arrival of the Lord Jesus.
Glory to Jesus. Let's be in the name of the Lord. I invite everyone to stand up. Let's have a word of glorification to the Lord because the Lord has given us everything that we need to be firm in His presence. I want to praise you because you are the one that, who makes yourself present in our midst, Lord. We praise you for a lit up lamp. We praise you for this great feast, Lord, in our house. Bless be your name, Lord. For each child here, intermediary and adolescent, we praise your name, Lord. Because you are the one who brought us here. We praise you for our life in your presence. We praise you for this great blessing this day. For the joy of serving the Lord. We praise you for the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. After a class like this, where what was preached may the Lord awaken us you who are our visitor this desire of also be prepared to meet Jesus we know that there is no other way other means for our salvation other than to surrender ourselves to Jesus to accept his sacrifice on the cross his death but above all, his resurrection. Because it's through the resurrection in Jesus that we have access, the right of being also eternal. To have a new life, a life that never is over, a never, life that never is over. That's the life that Jesus wants for you. And that's what he has for you. But the way for us to have this is through the sanctification, the seeking the Lord. So the children uh, answered. All the answers are great. So being in the presence of the Lord, fasting, seeking the Lord, reading the word, being in the church. This is very important. And it is what is a fuel for all of it, right? So that our lamp remain lit up. And the more we seek the Lord, the more the fire of this lamp will be stronger. The brightness of this lamp will be greater. And the Lord will, will see us and will call us. Amen. I want to thank all of those who are present, those that received our invitation and accepted it and came here this morning. It's a great joy for you to be here with us participating in this great celebration. And it is our desire is that you always be in the, in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We're not here preaching the name of a denomination that shout Maranatha is a biblical word. Maranatha is a biblical word which means Come, Lord Jesus. And this is, is our message. Jesus is coming. Amen. We want you to be prepared together with us to meet Jesus. Let us close our eyes. We're going to pray, bring the service to a close in the presence of the Lord. Lord, Father, we want to praise your name. Glorify your name, Lord. Because you are present in our midst. Because if by faith we can see the walking of your angels amongst us. By faith we can hear a voice. By faith we know that your spirit is being poured out upon uh, us, Lord. Receive the service, the prayer that were said, the ones that were said aloud. And the ones that were made in the silence of our hearts but you are an all-knowing God 
and we ask that you may answer those prayers in your time and that we you may continue speaking to the hearts bring us lord to desire to be in your presence each family here represented and place them in your author and we ask that your hands may be laying upon them opening up the doors blessing them operating health spiritual health and physical health and that you may operate your blessing in each home here represented and that your love may be a God may be seen and that your love may be accepted and we know that you are the Lord Jesus take us home in peace is a prayer that we say in the name of Jesus amen in your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. Once again, we want to thank the, our brethren who are connected with us, the city of Marietta, Winsboro, Morro Beach, and the states there. May the Lord continue blessing the, your church, your homes. Amen. And I say the peace of the Lord to everyone. The teacher prepared uh, a little snack for the children. Out, out there, there is a place for you to take pictures. And the church, once again, thank you. Uh, the, teacher, the, uh, the teachers, they thank your participation to all the peace of the Lord.